Good morning, everyone. We're back. So uh, anything that we say is not meant to diagnose you or cure you. If you happen to become cured, just don't mention our names. Um, so Karen, looks like we have um, a lot of people logging on. So we'll give you a couple minutes before you have any questions. But I just wanted to briefly uh, mention that we are going to do our summit coming up at the end of August. So um, we secured a date. It's going to be August 30. 5th, 29th, and 30th? Yes. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do it then. We have a, the speaker lineup will blow you away. So I'm not going to reveal that until we actually get the page done, but it's going to be an exciting event. Uh, this week, I'm going to be releasing some interesting videos. Uh, one's going to be on um, adrenal you fatigue do. and will it cause weight gain? Um, I'm going to talk about that. But there's some interesting twist how to avoid weight gain with adrenal fatigue. Also, I'm going to expand the remedy list for rheumatoid arthritis because that's a have some really great um, evidence-based data on natural remedies for rheumatoid. Um, we're going to talk about adaptogens, what that is, herbal adaptogens, and um, also what people really, really ate um, in the ancient paleo times. This will be very interesting. Then we're going to go into subclinical vitamin C data, which is so common in the four main uh, symptoms that happen that a lot of people have, don't know it, but it's just a simple vitamin C deficiency. And I'll, I'll give you one. Um, it's those little red dots on the hair follicles. If you ever see in the back of the arm or the leg, um, that's a vitamin C deficiency. So anyway, with that being said, let's go right to Margo from Utah. You had a question. Are you there, Margo? All right, Margo, are you, are you there? OK, so uh, Margo is not there. So let's go to Lillian from Maryland, right down the street. Lillian, are you there? Looks like um, we're good. We're going to um, fix that. Um, so one of the things that, um, and if you have any questions, just let me know, Karen. All right. Um, one of the things that I, I wanted to mention regarding the 30-day um, challenge, a lot of you guys, we have like 40,000 people that are um, basically logged on. And so they're getting messages every morning. If you have a problem with the message, just email us uh, at drberg at drberg.com and we'll figure it out. But the point is that um, there's a lot of people getting some serious results. I uh, can't wait to see the after pictures, uh, not just weight loss, for cognitive benefits. So the goal was to kind of educate people every, every day. So we, see, we give you a little tip on this little phone right here. And um, also, if you um, are new and you want to um, enroll, we will have a link down there. And then you basically get a message every day, and I help you and coach you to get through this. Um, some of you are seasoned keto people. Some of you are doing uh, fasting for five days. Some of you are just starting out. So I try to keep it really, really simple. Um, intermittent fasting is going to be like the theme, the major theme uh, of this um, summit. But of course, we're going to talk about healthy keto. But um, the reason why I want to really emphasize uh, keto fa or fasting is because of the powerful benefits, which are very, very, um, in a way, strange that you would actually create a sense of starvation and your body would adapt. Your brain starts growing new cells. The synapses start connecting. It's just a survival mechanism. And I really want everyone to do it. If you're not doing it, you have to try it. Those of you that are doing it um, are seeing the results. It's quite so simple. And it's not hard, especially because the hunger goes away. But the benefits are huge. Um, I love it for cognitive function, but um, it will even bring up your overall mood. And uh, so it's quite remarkable. So how are we doing, Steve? Are we uh, Very close, Doc. <laughs> All right, Karen, what do, we, do we have some really interesting uh, comments here I see uh, on social media? What do, what do we? So here's a question from Christina on Facebook. She's on keto and IF fasting 20 to 24 hours. She wants to be a little lax on the fa 
fasting on the weekends, and she wants to know if it will undo the progress she's made. Yeah, it's all it's all um, in degrees. I think if you um, if you you can really go off the wagon like really bad and, and screw it up. But if you are if as a minor issue, then it's, it's probably going to be you know several hours. So I think it really depends on how many carbs that you consume. And we're not just talking about sugar; we're talking about uh, refined carbohydrates too. Um, for example, um, let's say for example you cheated with something with sugar in it, okay, and it was cane sugar, versus cheating with something that had maltodextrin. What do you think would be worse? Karen, what do you think would be worse? Uh, maltodextrin or actual sugar? I was not listening. <laughs> okay. Maltodextrin. To the extreme. If we look at the glycemic index, sugar is like 72 or 74. It might be actually 70. And then you have pure glucose is 100. But maltodextrin is about 110. So if you're consuming anything with maltodextrin, and, and you're going to, that's in all the, like the muscle, uh, muscle uh, powders that they have, like muscle gain powders. And it's just so, so bad. And folks, so, our, uh, we're sorry. Our phones have been very cranky lately, but we think we've got them back up. So, Doc, if you'd like to try one. Let's see. Margo, you're from Utah. Are you on the line? I'm on the line. All right, great. We got you. We logged in. So you had a question. Go ahead. Hello to both of you. I was at last year's summit and can't wait for this year's. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. All right. Uh, pretty steamy and dang that stuff. Been doing keto since the last summit. Yay. Yay. Yeah. I started noticing some healing with taking your veggie solution, which is so exciting. I've been fasting for two weeks now, only drinking Thomas DeLauer apple cider vinegar mixes and I'm really struggling right away in the mornings and throughout the day with the strong hypo symptoms. Instead of having great results with an awesome brain, I'm feeling so foggy and I feel pretty terrible until I break my fast. I tested with blood in the first week and I was in ketosis. Now I'm still only eating 20 carbs, but I'm out the last two mornings. I don't know if your electrolyte powder will kick me out. I really would like to drink it, or if cinnamon added to the apple cider vinegar would. But my biggest question is, am I still in a fasting state even though I'm testing low? Yeah, so here's the thing. If you're, what, what's, the, um, what's the hours on your fasting? How many hours a day are you fasting? I've started out with 18, went to 20, started to go down to 16 because I was struggling, even moved it down to 12 struggling. Oh, okay. So, in other words, you're struggling with uh, the symptoms of high, uh, low blood sugar? Yes. Now, were you doing okay initially and then you weren't doing okay? No. I've always, the, the symptoms are severe. I've always had very severe and I've noticed a little bit of healing with your green powder and okay. I was able to go a little bit longer. But when I jumped right into fasting, it just, symptoms are there. I got yeah. it. And is it, um, is it a dizziness, fatigue, or is it more like hunger pains? Uh, what would you suggest? Hunger. Hunger. Okay. Definitely hunger. Definitely, definitely shaky. And definitely brains just dying like crazy. Like I can't really think. Okay. So there's two things I want to tell you, Margo. And I think it just has to be insulin resistance. So um, what you're going to do is, you know, work on your meals, making sure they're good. Okay. Um, then what I want you to add to this is... Um, either MCT oil or, and maybe even alternate both to see which one works better, exogenous ketones, they're called ketone salts. And basically, it'll just give you the ketones, give your brain the ketones, get your muscles the ketone energy without necessarily your body put you into ketosis to make it more comfortable and to make sure the transition is smooth and also to get rid of the hunger and the cravings. So that's one thing I would do to help you go longer. And then you just have to you may have to even do three meals, no snacks, and just do that for a while before your body starts kind of coming back. Now, there is something recently that I uh, heard from a, a client, which kind of shocked me, but I wanted to just mention it too. And I, I, I don't know if it's true with everyone, but certain people, when they start doing apple cider vinegar in their water, uh, sometimes it affects their blood sugars. Now, that's new to me. It's supposed to improve the blood sugars. So try and experiment to see how you do with it or without it. Generally, people do good with it. But um, so experiment with that and also the MCT oil. And then um, just go a little slower. 
and just ride the wave because um, depending on what's going on, it could just take a little more time. Thanks for your call. All right, Karen from, actually from Virginia Beach. Virginia, you had a question on plant-based keto question? What's, it, what's your question? Well, actually, no. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Um, I was on keto from 2016 to about a year ago, and, and then I got off. Um, I was concerned about a few things, um, and I was, wasn't moving anywhere. But anyways, that's irrelevant. Um, my concern is I got off. I'm starting, I started putting on weight in November, so I have to choose a diet to go on. And here's the thing. And I've heard about plant-based diets and keto diets. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are saying that keto is only safe short term. Mm -hmm. And I can't find any sources um, that, says, that tells me that it's okay long term. My biggest concern is if I can clean out my arteries. I don't know what my arteries look like. I know my dad had heart surgery and heart issues. So that's a big concern for me. So as I, I don't know whether to go plant-based keto or what because mm -hmm. there's so many people to listen to. Yeah, Dr. I Johnny. Dr. Stephen Gundry, Dr. Johnny Bowden, um, you, um, the the, ma the mastering diabetes boy, Cyrus something or other, and and I'm I'm looking for sources so I know I'm, this confusion just stops. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think the best way to handle this, Karen, because you you got a lot of different viewpoints out there. Now you could sit down there and um, study all the uh, research yourself and try to figure it out, which could take uh, years, um, or you can just split things up into two different categories. Try one way a couple weeks and try the other way and see which works better for you because honestly um, in order for you to really um, understand the physiology you'd have to go back to school and take maybe a physiology class to get all the the, the basics to dive in but I will say this uh, a lot of the plant-based docs that um, that are, are uh, promoting plant-based programs they're quoting observ observational studies which are low on the list of credibility, and I can I give references on that. Um, the other thing is that um, this whole data of like keto is only good short term, that is um, an argument that they made. They say, well, it's good for short term, but not long term, because we didn't have the studies. Well, there's no studies that say it's not good long term. Um, if it works short term, why wouldn't it work long term? Our bodies were um, developed way back. Um, on a lower carbohydrate. Now, did we do plant-based? Yes, and you should watch the new video that I, I'm gonna do on that, but um, I think plants are wonderful and I think you need to eat them in large quantities, especially like to get your potassium and sodium. So um, my viewpoint is that you combine the plant-based plants with some protein because if you go low on the protein, it's, um, you may uh, have symptoms um, of deficiencies. I, I know people who've done vegan slightly incorrectly and end up losing your teeth and their hair. So I think at the end of the day, you need to go with something that provides all of your nutrients. And, um, and I would, to make this very simple, I think you should try both viewpoints and see what you feel better and see the results on each one. Okay? Thanks, Karen. All right, what do we have uh, coming through the pipeline on the interwebs? Okay, good. So, um, so question, I didn't get the name. Will uh, She's breastfeeding and she wants to do one meal a day but wants to know, will it affect her breast milk? Yeah, I think um, that's something you have to kind of have supervision if you're doing intermittent fasting and uh, breastfeeding just because, you know, check with your doc because a lot of times um, you, you want to satisfy all of the nutrition and sometimes it's hard because you're, you'd, you'd have to eat a very large meal to get all of your nutrients. So I probably would do two meals and uh, make sure they're nutrient dense. I've done videos on this, so you can watch that. But um, if you're breastfeeding, you need a lot of B vitamins, nutritional yeast. You definitely need the um, cod liver oil, DHA, and trace minerals, not to mention vitamin C from all the leafy greens. Okay, good. So Jen from Facebook, she says she wants to do keto. She doesn't have a colon, and she wants to know if she needs to do anything differently. Well, you need to go find and see if you can get one replaced. They have them. They have some spare parts down, down at the local. Now, um, here, here's what happens. When you don't have a colon, you're going to lessen your ability to absorb certain things. Um, if they 
if you don't have the small intestine versus the large intestine, it's two different things. So I think what I would recommend if I were you is I would, you're going to have to su um, substitute um, some of the nutrients with a, maybe a liquid form of nutrients or um, something that your body can easily assimilate. For example, like the protein, um, you might have to do like amino acids so your body can just, doesn't have to break it down, it just goes right in. Or like a, um, a greens powder, so your body doesn't have to really work hard on that, but you definitely need some fiber too. Um, but that's, kind of, that's what I would do. I would actually enhance your diet and do a lot of intermittent fasting. That, but your body will adapt to a certain degree, so it's not the end of the world, um, but you do have to make sure that there's certain nutrients that you spike. Okay? Okay, good. Do you want another one? Yes, I do. Okay, so someone's asking where they can get information on the 30-day challenge. I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's down below on the page. Okay, so check it out. It's, you just have to enter in either uh, your text us or uh, messenger, and um, we'll take the call and register you. Good. And then, um, I didn't get the name, but someone on YouTube. This is an interesting qu question. You've apparently made a comment that carbs turn into fat. Yeah, that's right. So if carbs turn into fat, then why can't it work on keto? Why can't eating carbs do on keto? Because the goal of keto because is to get rid of your could, fat. <laughs> because you eat fat on keto. It's actually an interesting question. Uh, well, here's the thing. Um, in keto, you're burning fat, right? You're, you're burning your fat. If you eat carbs, it's going to be converted to fat. But here's the catch-22. Not only does insulin cause you to convert carbs to fat, but it also at the same time prevents the burning of fat. That's probably what they're missing. So it's a, it's a catch-22. You, you you're just all storing and you can't burn. So you won't be able to burn your fat if you're doing carbs. There you go. Okay, so now Sherry on YouTube, she says she's been doing keto for 18 months. Not sure what kind of keto. Okay. But keto for 18 months. Yeah. But has fluid distended stomach and wants to know what to do about that. Well, um, you know, fluid distended stomach. It, it could be, I mean, if it's true fluid, that's called ascites, that's a liver problem, and you should probably work in the liver. But Typically, if you're doing keto for that long and you're doing the healthy version based on the book that I put out, you, the only, only way you're going to get a, um, a belly is if you're sensitive to all the vegetables or maybe you're getting bloating from all the fat that you're not used to digesting or you're doing all the keto bombs with all the sugar alcohols. Sugar alcohols can definitely disrupt the tummy and create bloating. So. What, to, to evaluate that, I'm kind of missing information, so maybe you can clarify. Mm. Um, yeah, but it's not going to be like, you're not going to, if you do keto healthily, you're not going to put on fat in your gut. But I will say this, Karen. Yeah. Um, you're familiar with the term cortisol? Yes. It's a stress hormone. Mm -hmm. um, the receptors for cortisol are in the fat around the organs, but not the superficial fat. So if you're getting a belly, but not really superficial fat. That's more cortisol than anything How else. How do you know if it's superficial fat or? Like, you know the, the kind of the plub type um, handles that people have on <laughs> their midsection? The little muffin top? I have no <laughs> idea what you're referring to. <laughs> okay. So um, <clears throat> there's two types of fat. Plub. Uh, <laughs> I'll just make it up, making up a term there. There's, uh, what's the name Is for it? Is it soft? Or what do you? It Subcutaneous. <laughs> the, no one's going to know. It's the superficial fat that's right underneath the skin. Okay. Versus the gut. Okay. Does that describe it? The basketball in the stomach? Okay. Yeah. Keep talking. All right. Okay. So cortisol could uh, mainly will cause the midsection, and you won't necessarily have like just superficial fat, like the love handles and back fat. Uh, that's not cortisol. Cortisol is going to be the sagging belly. Okay. This is just an extra tip. Our good. Extra well, thing. we're going to move on to another question here. So okay, Vicky good. on Facebook wants to know, can you explain why we're always, we always heard never skip breakfast 
or eat five to six small meals a day just to keep your metabolism fired? Is this just old, outdated information? No, this is actually um, someone who um, was selling breakfast cereals or breakfast food started this rumor and long ago, and then we just kind of latched on to it and said, hey, yeah, let's do breakfast. Yeah, it's a good idea. Um, a lot of countries don't do breakfast. They might do a late breakfast, but did you know, Karen, that um, do you know the reason why a lot of countries have siestas? So you ever, did, did you ever think about that? Did you ever ponder that? Countries having a, a needing a, a nap after lunch? Because they're, it's a blood sugar crash. Yes, that's right. So, I mean, even people in uh, Italy, Greece, Spain, uh, Vietnam, um, Philippines, Mexico, South America, you know, it's like, um, they have the rice noodles, the rice, the potatoes, the corn. So when you do those carbs, it literally just puts you out. And I'm going to do a video on that, Karen. And you'll need a nap. So for those of you that need a nap, I want you to try an experiment for one week. Just cut out the noodles and the rice and the bread and the pasta just for one week and see if you're still as tired. I bet you, you won't need a nap at lunchtime. That's just my guess. Okay, so I'm um, really looking at the questions right here, and it uh, uh, <laughs> looks like I um, lost It's a, a little few problem questions. with the phone system at the moment. So let's take advantage of that yeah. over in social media world. Um, okay, uh, on challenge and doing clean keto and IF for three and a half weeks, got a rash on my hands only. Possible causes and remedies help. That's from <coughs> Kathy. Usually the rash, okay. Now, is that person doing intermittent fasting or keto? She says keto and IF. Okay. Here's the thing. There's two different reasons why you get a rash on keto. Typically, you add, either have a vitamin B2 deficiency because you aren't necessarily taking enough nutritional yeast, or on fasting, you know, when you fast for long periods of time and you don't have the nutrient reserve, you can actually sh ma magnify nutritional deficiencies, especially like B2 and B3. So if you do the combination, you're not doing nutritional yeast while you're fasting, then the rash could, could come on and you could feel weird. So anytime you do prolonged intermittent fa or fasting in general, if you have symptoms, think nutrient deficiency. Not necessarily with the fat-soluble vitamins, but with the water ones like B vitamins and vitamin C. So, um, yeah, and vitamin C, boy, the, you can actually get the fatigue, that's one, bleeding gums, there's, gonna, there's actually four. I'm going to talk about those. But let's, uh, let's take some more questions here. Okay. So here's one. Uh, her son has autism with sleeping issues. They've been giving him melatonin every night. Uh -huh. Saw your video about no melatonin. What could she do to help him? Now, this is a really important thing. I think that um, there's a couple things that I think are really important. I would do either a combination of MCT oil or exogenous ketones to just fill the brain with energy. That's going to actually help your child. But also, um, there's another remedy, and that remedy is uh, silicon, silica. That's a really good to combat certain heavy metals in the brain. Um, and then you want to do nutrient dense stuff. So you want to do like a lot of nutritional yeast and trace minerals and really flood that child with um, some, some extra nutrients. Um, the other thing that's really beneficial is uh, vitamin D3. Um, but I should do a comprehensive video on that because I think um, you can see huge changes. Just think whatever's um, good for an adult would be good for a child. So healthy keto and then not snacking and definitely cut out the carbs. Right, because there is no mention of following any kind of low sugar or keto type of diet. So we don't know that. Right. It, but that's important. Yeah, and I have a quiz for everyone. So if you want to see if you guys can answer this difficult question, what has more potassium? Is it um, a potato? An avocado or a banana? 
Okay. Answer us now on social media. Say it again. What has more? What is the most potassium? A banana, a potato, or an avocado? Okay. Mm -hmm. So speaking of potassium, someone asks, um, can they use take cream of tartar for their potassium? Yeah, you can. You can. I mean, um, how much cr cream of tartar would you need <coughs> to take? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. You'd have to look on the label, but. Um, you know, you, you just want to find a high-quality source. Um, I will say it's, um, if you take 1,000 milligrams, it's going to taste pretty disgusting because unless you flavor it, it's just, it's hard to get down. So, but you can do that if you want. Um, yeah, okay, so let's see. We have, um, let's go to Sue from Indian Indianap Indianapolis, Indiana. You had a question. Are you there? Yes, sir. I see. Um, in your book and on your videos, you talk about using the massage tool yeah. on the adrenal points and going to sleep that way. And you say start on the left side, then the right side. And I want to know why left first, and then could you just use the medium width of the tool and do them both at the same time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you, you don't necessarily have to do left or right. Um, I'm not sure why I told you to start that way, but you can start with <laughs> either one. But um, the reason why you, you don't want to do both is because it's too broad of a content. You want to work on one side at a time, especially um, differentiating between the left and right. One side is going to be more tender, uh, and you spend more time on that area and the tight areas, and just kind of work work on up through there. But you're basically taking a lot of tension out of the um, the fascia around the uh, abdomen, where a lot of people hold their stress, and it really will help your sleep dramatically. But I would just do one at a time. Thanks for your question, Sue. All right, and then Sammy from Saudi Arabia, you had a question. Are you there? Yes, hi. Hi. Uh, first thing is I'm a big fan of yours. Great. And, uh, and me and my wife, actually, you know, we are really into keto, and we've been doing this since, uh, I think, last year, March, in the mid. And uh, so I've been following keto for uh, around six months, and then I went on vacation, and so I had a break. And then after coming back, I tried to, you know, get back to keto and stuff. So the first thing, I have two questions. The first question is, after coming back from my vacation, it's been really hard for me to get back because for some reason, you know, I am following the same, the, mm -hmm. the same instructions to get into keto. But when I'm trying to test my ketos, uh, be it from the strips or by the blood, uh, it, it's never, you know, showing up. I mean, the 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 response or the, the you know, it's always showing it's very small or the, the percentage coming from the blood test, mm -hmm. it's like 0.3 or 0.5 and, you know, and nothing more than that. Okay. Second question okay. is, uh, I do a lot of intermittent fasting, uh, so from 18 to 20. But uh, what I fear is if I have your veggie solution, so if I drink that in the middle uh, of my inter intermittent fasting, would that break me out? Would that cut me out from the Got fasting? It. Okay, good questions, Sammy. Let's first start with the first one. Um, yeah, this is a good point. When you get off track, uh, it definitely will throw you off. You'll lose your momentum, and sometimes if you get back on, it's just not a matter of doing what you did before. You might have to um, add some additional changes to kind of get your body to reset. For example you might want to add a little bit more exercise. You might want to change up the pattern of intermittent fasting. Maybe go a little longer a few days of the week. Maybe even do um, one that's uh, 48 hours once a week just to kind of give your body a jump start. One of the best things to do after an accidental cheat day or whatever is intermittent fasting. Or not intermittent fasting, just fasting a lot longer to get your body to reset. Um, now, as far as the veggie solution goes, um, you can do it in the middle of, uh, between your, uh, the eating window. Not a problem, um, but you might want to test it on yourself, test the ketones, um, because on one hand, you're feeding the gut the uh, microbes, which actually then will help your blood sugars, but on the other hand, it is something that will break the fast a little bit, and if you're already having problems, might want to just stick that veggie solution right at the meal and not in the middle, just have a pure fast. Because 
Yes, you're getting benefit on the fasting, but you're also getting benefit between the eating window too, because it's a combination of things. So I would experiment on that. And thanks for uh, watching the videos and doing this. This is great, Sammy. All right, Karen, let's see. What do we, what do we have on this quiz? Well, uh, it was mostly avocado at first, and then someone said it's potato. I saw his video yesterday, and then a lot of people started saying potato. I did a video yesterday on potatoes? <laughs> I'm just telling you. <laughs> Maybe it was a plant. Maybe it was a, a, yeah. a deception. Yeah. Okay, so what do you think it is? What was the question? <laughs> what, what has, um, how do you um, improve the focus and listening of a question? Potato. Okay. Could try again. Avocado. Yes, yes, Karen, good. Yes, avocado has 708 milligrams of potassium. So, but guess what, Karen? But yeah. Believe it or not, potatoes do have a good amount of potassium. And you can have a potato as long as it's raw, raw Steve. Um, just don't cook it. You can eat as many potatoes as you want as long as it's raw. That cuts out french fries? No, no, no. Raw. Raw, <laughs> raw french fries. And it will not increase your blood sugar. So I want to see you eat that. And you can also have as much chocolate as you want as long as it's baker's chocolate, Steve. Uh, go shopping. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's uh, avocados. Uh, that's why avocados um, are good for a lot of things. All right. OK, so I have uh, Jasmine from YouTube. She has a six-year-old daughter who has dark circles under her eyes. We see this a lot in little yeah. kids, right? These yeah. dark circles and these little bitty yeah. bits. And she says um, she's a very picky eater. What can she do? Yeah. OK, so there's obviously nutritional deficiencies. And um, ideally, when you start out with that child, you, you never even show them a carbohydrate until they're uh, 16 years old. I mean, but it's too late now. So you're going to have to basically start with having substitutes for the things that she is eating that are borderline not good. Because the problem is that these kids have nutritional deficiencies. So you're going to have to first clean the house up of any, anything that's bad, add some keto-friendly things, start cooking with her, try to get her involved in the process of making keto-friendly foods. Um, that always helps. And then also, um, I always try bribing my kids um, with cash to eat vegetables, but that didn't work. So That would work with me. That would work with you, but <laughs> not with kids. Uh, it might actually, but no, it's no. It's, um, it's, a, it's education. It's leading by example, and it's really cleaning your house out of. Uh, I can't tell you how many people that we talk to, and they're trying to do keto, and the husband's not doing it, or th they have to do keto, but they feed the kids something different, yeah. and you know, it really, really starts with cleaning out your own home, and then, you know, what we do, we just insist, and we tell other family members. Um, you know, with our granddaughter, we had just have the conversation. You know, she's not to be fed sugar. Yeah. And I don't care what happens when they get older and they're exposed. This happened with our own kids. They get exposed, they feel like crap, and then they learn and make their own decisions. But you have to start them out really. You have to just set the rules and clean yeah. out your house and feed them stuff and figure out you know, what recipes, what do they like? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the, you know, that's the parent's job. And, and school is going to be another issue, and you'll have to control that best you can. But it's education, and it's starting at home. Yeah, someone needs to um, actually be adamant about that. And because what happens is you start going out to dinner, and then it's really hard. <clears throat> oh, give me that bread. Give me the dessert. Like, it's really hard. So you're going to have to just cope as well as you can until the child has the nutrition and then their chemistry gets balanced and then they'll they'll do much better but um, the bags into the eyes that's nutritional deficiencies mm -hmm. and you Karen, can Karen makes a good point in, in that with uh, keto and intermittent fasting you learn your lesson so it's different because you really feel better when you're doing this plan and you feel worse when you don't if you're having three lean cuisines a day that's just misery that's never something I look forward to going back to but I always look forward to, after skinning my knees by breaking uh, you know, a fast or, or eating crappily, uh, that I want to 
can go back to it. So that's, I think, the hugest difference. I've, I've gone off a few times, but I always want to come back because I want to return to that joy. Right. Yeah. I mean, the, one of the biggest upsets was when you went off it and you felt sick, really felt sick. And, you know, I think of this time we went out to dinner with some friends and they had their little girl who was just as sweet as anything all through dinner and, uh, you know, just lovely. And then the dessert came and she ate, it was at a fondue place, so she was eating chocolate and marshmallows and all kinds of things. And within minutes, she was uh, acting psychotic screaming, running around the restaurant, uh, couldn't sit, tantruming. I mean, it was, and, I, and you know, you give kids a dessert with the idea that it's a treat for them. Mm -hmm. Well, you cannot even pretend that that state of mania is, is pleasurable for a child or anyone. You know, it's maybe pleasant on the tongue, and I understand that, but, but to watch a child then be in this condition where they're clearly just out of control, it was actually really disturbing yeah, they, <laughs> and they sad. Just, they just don't have the judgment and... Uh, <laughs> it's up to the adult. <coughs> it's kind of like even asking, um, like if you took um, Steve, for example. Steve, let's say you're hungry and you're tired, right? And you ask... How'd you know? And you ask your body, what am I in the mood for? You're always going to get the wrong answer. So don't ask that question. It's a bad question. <laughs> Unless you're really, really adapted. And then you're going to be hungry for I think I'm into, I need, cheese I'm really in the mood or for a, a salad. salad. I have right. many times been in yeah. the mood for a it's salad. True, That's but true. Also, with intermittent fasting, at least you can put that off. If your plan is that I'm going to eat a little bit all day, there's no way I can stay away from the stuff that my tongue desires. Mm -hmm. But when I say, it's okay, Steve, three o'clock's coming, and you can have a really full, enjoyable meal, you're not going to sacrifice anything, then I'm able to discipline myself enough to wait for that. And that has been life-changing for me. That's great. Yeah, and we have to get kids, too. Kids have to eat more frequently, obviously. A six-year-old, you're not going to put her on one meal a day. But, um, you know, they just can't, I mean, obviously, if a child's picky, they're not going to eat what they don't want to eat. So your job is really to find what, what can I make and what can, what can they enjoy and really like eating that is on the list instead of saying, well, they won't eat anything else, so I'm going to give them, you know, whatever, cereal or whatever. And if it still doesn't work, um, just do what Steve did to his kids, just basically, n just, you're not going to have anything to eat until you get hungry enough, and then you'll eat what I want to give you. At 40 pounds, they yelled, Uncle. Right, exactly. Pedro, you're from uh, Pennsylvania. You had a question. Go ahead. Yes, uh, from Pittsburgh. Uh, am I in the show right now? Yes, yes. you are. Mm -hmm. you're Amazing. Uh, yeah, so first of all, I wanted to ask, um, so I'm doing keto, but uh, yesterday I was fasting for the entire day, I actually fasted more than 24 hours, I think. And um, today I uh, basically uh, drank um, orange juice, you know, the, the high uh, fructose one. And I think I drank a bit too much because I nearly uh, drank the entire bottle. And I feel like all of a sudden my liver got a little bit bubbly, you know, like it's mm -hmm. a little bit swollen. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's kind of strange. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I'm not used maybe to this amount of fructose. I don't know why I got so hard on it, but uh, yeah, it's, it hurts more when I, you know, it gets very bubbly when I sit. Yeah. But when I walk around, it's fine. I got it. What do you think? So you want, you have a question, what do you do now? What's the question? Uh, yeah. Don't advice. drink any more orange juice. juice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what Definitely. I do, Pedro. Um, yeah, what happens is like the fructose either from the fruit or the high fructose corn syrup, what happens, it doesn't go to your whole body to deal with. It actually, the liver is stuck having to cope with all that, that, um, that fructose, and it puts a huge strain on the liver. So, yeah, I think you learned your lesson not to do that anymore, but, but if you want to do something to try to clean out that sugar, I would get out there and start exercising it off, and that way you can um, burn off the sugar as much as possible. But even that might not work because your muscles aren't, um, aren't getting it. It's your liver that's getting it. 
you're just going to have to wait it out and do fasting, Petro, okay? Okay, so I just, I'm learning that no one could hear you, Steve. Oh, so it was just awkward wow. silence while we're just staring at Steve oh, and no, no one knew what he was saying. He was saying really amazing things about... Oh my gosh, you can't hear me, audience? Can you hear him? Oh gosh. We're just like looking over the people like, uh, aren't you guys... <laughs> yeah, super awkward silence while Steve's talking and today he was talking a lot because he had some really uh, good things to say. But anyway, recap, he said... <laughs> He loves keto and IF, and it's he can't wait when he if he did cheat, he felt like crap and couldn't wait to resume. And okay, he said Mary he says she can hear him. Greg says it's very muffled, and uh, Gunelli said he heard Steve everything he said. Okay, good. So okay, everyone's saying he can hear him. Okay. Now <laughs> they can hear him now. Oh, now. Okay. Thank goodness, my finest moment. It was his finest moment. Um, sorry that you missed it if you missed it, but yeah, that was probably super awkward, us just standing, sitting here just like. Well, appreciate your tolerance, guys. I'm glad uh, you guys all have good adrenals to tolerate things like that, and uh, no one is critical or fall funny. I really appreciate that. All right, good. Um, Dubai. Someone's calling from Dubai. Dubai, great city. Amazing city. Amazing city. Okay, you're on. You had a question? Yes, Hello, sir. Doc. Hi, yes. how are you? Yes, I'm here. Yes, yes. Hello, good, good, good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm not, yeah, it's a good morning at you. It's good evening at my time. How are you today? Okay, good. Uh, so, Doctor, I've started keto uh, after reading your book uh, since almost one year and a half. And, and by the way, I'm mostly uh, adrenal type and I do have an asthma also. Okay. Uh, I got at the beginning, uh, I got very high of uric acid and used like diuretics for two months, then use your electrolytes and green powder and drink uh, 16 ounces of water, two squeezed lemon with three tablespoon of apple cider vinegar every day. Mm -hmm. And after that, it's perfect. Maybe it's too much, I'm not sure if it's too much, or three tablespoon of apple cider vinegar every day, but usually it's after food. Mm -hmm. So everything is okay till f from that time. Okay. Uh, Done everything you advise using natural processed food and uh, unprocessed food, sorry, and use your supplement. I started 110 kg, uh, metric guy, almost 240 pounds, 242 exactly. Okay. And after eight months, I reached 176 pounds. So 66 pounds, 70 pounds was gone. Good. And I'm stable since then on my weight 175, 174 since that time. Good. Uh, now I still have two stretch marks mm. on my skin. It's little, not much. On my skin, especially on, uh, let's say, on chest, hips, belly, a little on thighs. Okay. So if you might have solution for that, maybe. Yeah. And the second one, I start going to gym first ever in my life at the age of 38, mm -hmm. which I am right now. Oh, okay. Uh, if you can advise the best possible percentage of carbs, protein, and fats for the muscle gain, maybe. Uh, I, I do eat two meals a day, one in the morning. When I go to gym, I, I eat one meal in the morning between 9 and 10 as okay. a breakfast. I go to gym around 3 o'clock after 6 hours. Then I take my second meal after I come back from the gym. Okay. I usually do high-intensity workout, so I exhaust myself. Okay, so let me tell you and what to do. Are you ready for this? Are you sitting down? Okay, so this is what you're going to do. Um, you need to go to one meal a day because you want to help that skin renew, right? So the more intermittent fasting you do, the more you get new skin. And that's all collagen, that's protein. So that's going to be very, very important. The other thing you want to do is get a high quality vitamin E, probably a wheat germ oil, and you want to be rubbing it into the skin, like in the shower. You could, like you can take a shower and then rub it in the skin for like several minutes, right into where the, um, the little red lines are. And you're going to have to do that for some weeks or even some months to be able to heal and to get your body to reabsorb this, that scar in there. Um, but that's what you need to do. But the key is the combination of intermittent fasting and then also exercise to, s to really start to activate uh, the muscles and also the tissue on top of the muscle, which is your skin. But your one meal a day is going to be key with you, and I'm glad you're exercising. So try that and uh, let us know how you do. Okay. Got some interesting questions? Sure. First, I just have to give a shout out to Robin Bryce, who referenced one of my favorite 
She said, Steve sounded like Charlie Brown's teacher. <laughs> oh, gosh. That is Robin. so bizarre. And people can only hear you in one ear, and you need a microphone, and Steve's voice is like God. There's a lot going on here about you, Steve, so we're cutting you off. This isn't right. the Steve show. <laughs> now, anyway, um, so someone wants to know your viewpoint on lentils. Mm -hmm. Yes okay. or no? No, I, okay. wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend those. Okay. Now, because <laughs> you know what a lentil leads to? More lentils, more lentils. Okay, I don't know that. That was news Learned to me. Learn something new every day. Okay. Good. So, what about um, a coffee enema? Um, it, it it does have a purpose. It does help to purge the gallbladder. Um, it does help people. I mean, occasionally you can do it. You are getting a lot of caffeine for sure because it's going absorbing right in there. So, um, yeah. I mean, occasionally I think it's fine. Okay. Yeah. And there's a fellow on YouTube, he says his heart rate's always between 80 and 90. How does he get it down? I have no idea if he's doing keto or IF or what the scene is, but the best thing, the question. The, the best thing to bring the heart rate down is to have enough potassium and magnesium too, but mainly potassium. Also, if you're deficient in um, B1, um, you also have a higher pulse rate. So a combination of nutritional yeast and electrolyte powder will be good to bring that pulse rate into the right range. But um, yeah, there's, there's other reasons, but those are the two common ones. Good. All right. And then one more yeah. question. Mm -hmm. um, again, I didn't get the name. Sorry about that. But um, heartburn after lemon water and apple cider vinegar. What's up with yeah, that? Yeah, this probably means that you have uh, either gastritis or potentially an ulcer. I'm not saying you do, but potentially you do. So if you feel worse on that, um, but really differentiate, is it the lemon or the combination? I would have them separately because let's say, for example, you do the apple cider vinegar and it feel worse, then we know there's some, some irritation or inflammation in your stomach, in which case you need to add zinc, you need to do chlorophyll type stuff, and then just let it heal up and intermittent fasting. But if it's the lemon, that means that um, you could just need more um, like betaine hydrochloride because Lemon does tend to, even though it's an acid, it turns into an alkaline substance after a period of time. So it could be alkalizing you without even knowing it. So that's what I would do. Okay. okay? All right, Sonia, you're from um, Leesburg, Georgia. You had a question. Are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you fine. Can you hear me? Yep. Great. Yes, I have the last two weeks I have been watching so many videos thank you and I have learned so much I have started the fasting for 19 hours I've been consistent with the 19 hours for the past week um, I'm still doing like two meals a day in that I can easily go to one I'm just scared I'll go I'll be deficient in um, my minerals mm -hmm. I'm taking supplements um, and I can tell by that I'm in insulin resistant mm. how and um, I'm and I'm doing also um, exercise. Just started doing it a little, mm -hmm. and um, doing keto. So all of that, trying to get it in. Now um, I'm also on um, Exenda, um, and it's for the last couple of months. And I'm feeling that that may be too much of the same thing. Um, if it were you, and if you were just starting out, 300 plus pounds. Um, and if you were insulin resistant, um, I didn't know that until I watched your videos, but I'm very insulin resistant, I can mm -hmm. tell. Um, then would you continue with sex in the, um, or would you mm -hmm. just shoot for the, the fasting and let it do the work? So this is what I would do. Um, can't tell you to not take a medication, but um, if it was me, I would try to maximize the um, knowledge about insulin resistance and what exactly do you have to do to make insulin work again and what do you have to do to improve this situation. I have several videos on exactly you know, getting your carbs really low, doing intermittent fasting. Those two alone will be essential and then you can add some other things in there like vitamin D, vitamin C, nutrition, um, high density uh, nutrient dense foods. Those things with time uh, will put you in a state where the need for medication uh, can go way, way down. 
course, with the help of your doctor. Um, but um, I think you're on the right track. Here's the key, though. When you check your blood sugars and it comes down to normal, um, if something is normal, your doctor should say, well, don't take medication if it's normal because then you're going to end up with hypoglycemia, low blood sugar, right? So you want to get to a state where it's normalized. So then the need for less, less, less to the point where hopefully you won't even need it anymore. Okay? Good question. But you know what, Karen? I just realized something. Hmm. I can see. I can see fine. I can read this. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. Before, I was like, I needed these things right here. Maybe I don't need these anymore. I just look down. I'm like, everything's perfectly clear. Isn't that interesting? That's fascinating. I think this uh, intermittent fasting is really helping. Poof! <laughs> 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 Okay. Okay. Hey. Okay. So Rita is seventy-five years old. Okay. She needs to lose twenty pounds, and she yeah. just wants to know: at her age, is it okay to do keto and intermittent fasting? She's only seventy-five. Rita, what seventy-five. Do you, what do you think? I'm going like to let you answer that. Today's fifty. Yeah, it's the new fifty. It's the new fifty. I don't. Know, don't sweat it, Rita. So I have a you, you have to wear a bikini in five months, Rita. Start. So when someone gets older, should can they do more keto and IF or less? What do you think? More keto? How do you do more keto? I thought it was just be, keto. Be more, on ke like be more strict on keto. I think Is it going to make things better or worse? I think it, it can only make things better. Good. I mean, That's obviously, you, you don't want to, like at anybody at any age, you don't want to fast to a point of weakness or anything like that. You have to do it in a very smart way. But I think people naturally, as they get older, they, they consume less and they tend to fast more. From my observation as occupational therapist and as a person who has several parents. I can actually even Lots this. of parents. This is, I'm, just, I'm just excited. This is amazing. Rita. I didn't need those glasses after we, all. We, he does value your question. He's just very excited about being able to read. <laughs> wow, this is amazing. Okay, Rita, thank you for your question. Um, now we're going to go to Pam. Did you answer it? Yes, we did answer it. The answer is yes, you can do it. Okay. Hey, Pam, are you there? Buckeye, Arizona. Yes, I am. Okay, great. Buckeye. Buckeye. Isn't that Hi, how are you? Hi, uh, great. I appreciate you guys a lot. I, I, I listen to you guys. Um, as, as much as I can. The question I have for you is this. I've been on keto um, for six months um, with IF also. Um, after the first four, I met my goal, which was 30 pounds I wanted to lose, and I did. Um, I feel great, and now I just want to stay healthy, but I hate cooking. So you often talk about one of your meals as being the really big, leafy salad, and that's where I want to stay. And so I've been, for my OMAD, for the, my one meal I've been doing, um, a large romaine salad with avocado and then the meat of my choice with oil and balsamic vinegar. And I also have, of course, my 90-second sugar-free cupcake that I put in the microwave. <laughs> and then during the day, I do five to six bottles of electrolyte waters. Um, and I feel like I'm getting the right amount of water in me. And I am just also want to make sure I'm not you know, doing too many electrolytes. And then I do my vitamins daily. Mm -hmm. um, and my minerals and my potassium and I take apple cider vinegar pills because I really don't like the apple cider vinegar mm -hmm. and then I just received your kit in the mail um, and I'm just starting to read your book uh, and I found out I have a liver body so that's kind of interesting too so um, anyway so the question is of course can I just exist on just doing a salad a day with putting other things in it without having to get to the stove mm, yeah in fact, you know what? That's pretty much what we do a lot of times, too. I mean, have the salad, add a little of this. We don't do this whole production with cooking very often. Um, I mean, I like to cook yeah. now and then, but it's so easy. One meal a day. I mean. Yeah, we're cut, cutting the salad. We're doing the salad. We had some protein. Um, sometimes, like, that summer sausage that we have, that's really it's sugar-free. Like, that's my protein. I'll do some of that. I might cut some cheese. I'm like, bam. I cut this cheese because I'm from Wisconsin, and I consume it with the protein. I knew you were going to. I didn't say <laughs> you anything. Had to, you, had to <laughs> you went there. 
you had to. I did to, not say anything. You insinuated. You <laughs> but gave I, me the look. <laughs> but I do. <laughs> Let's quickly fast forward. I am getting questions. How your um, eyesight? Eyesight thing improving with intermittent fasting has prompted some questions. How long are you fasting that you saw improvement with your vision? So I did an experiment recently and I went from 18 hours to 21 hours fasting consistently and that apparently is making a huge difference in my vision. I heard that from someone else as well uh, recently. So I mean I'm looking down at the page now and I'm going, wow this is really becoming evident that um, I think uh, I'm not going to need these things anymore. But I was just like, wow, that's, I can actually read perfectly. This is a miracle. It Fasting is a miracle. Works. It's a keto miracle. Fasting works. So um, try an experiment, guys. Extend your fast longer and do that for a good solid couple day. Couple weeks. No, a couple weeks. And uh, then evaluate your vision. I think, um, you know, because you're, do, you're in autophagy. Autophagy is cleaning up all this dead protein and, or, or de defective proteins in your in your tissue. All right, so Charles uh, from Georgia, you had a question. Go ahead, Charles. Yeah, hey, hello. Uh, first, I just wanted to thank you for all the information you provide. I couldn't believe when I stumbled on your on your uh, videos that you had so many and they were so so in depth. Um, all right, so my question is about uh, breaking a fast. What breaks a fast specifically with respect to autophagy? Mm -hmm. Um, I want to do some longer, maybe two or three, four day fasts, and, but I want to take my multi-collagen, spirulina, chlorella, and some grass juice powders. And I'm just wondering, because it totaled up for a dose of what I'm looking at taking is about 60 calories. Um, was that enough to, to stop autophagy or at least um, hinder it a lot? Good question, Charles. Um, you know, at our summit coming up, I have a, a real top expert on autophagy that's coming. He's wrote books about it, um, so if you have a chance, come. But um, generally speaking, if you do um, protein-based um, things when you're fasting, that's going to probably mess you up more than everything. And I'm talking about like branched amino acids or collagen or even some bone broth. It's going to it's going to add some protein. It's going to inhibit depending on how much how many calories. But if you did um, just amino acids in the right form, um, you, it actually you'll use so many of those, like you can use like 98% of it. There's hardly any for um, spiking sugar or waste. So that might be an option for you. Um, it's called keto essential aminos. But as far as the green powders and the, um, those will, won't really break the fast too much. So I wouldn't even worry about those. You can do those periodically. Electrolytes are not going to be an issue. Tea is not going to be a problem. Coffee is not going to be a problem. But it's really when you get into the protein, or even, even the, some of the fats, even the MCT oil. Um, not against it. So if you really wanted to, you know, if you were doing MCT oil, for example, instead of that, just do exogenous ketones. And that way, you're not taking the oil, you're taking the straight ketones without the fat, and bam. Because ketones are not fat. It's a fuel from fat. OK? I know. <laughs> All right. You need another call? Yes, I do. Sandra from Missouri, Springfield, you had a question. Go ahead. Yes, actually I have a couple of them, but um, I started keto in August of last year, and I've lost 50 pounds. Woo! Good. And ding, ding, ding. <clears throat> that's good. Yes, and I love the keto diet. Um, it's the diet for me because I can have cheese. And that's my favorite food. Cheese? But uh, I have developed a leg ulcer, and it has not healed. And uh, I'm wondering if it has anything to do with the keto diet. Um, I do want to let you know that I'm on 200 mcgs of levothyroxine, 7.5 mgs of Kumadin, uh blood thinner, and uh, fluoresmide 40s, and my leg, I have a lot of water in my bottom part, uh, and I had a staph, but started it all with a staph infection in my leg, mm -hmm. uh, which started 
you know, years ago, they were, were going to cut my legs off, and I stood in faith to get out of the hospital with them, and I still have them, but they look horrible. And they are uh, swelled a lot, and I have to uh, get the water out and stuff. But uh, I've never had, had one this large. It's about an uh, inch so, and a half. To Sa Sandra, you're breaking up a little bit. Uh, so I'm just going to answer your question. I think I... I understand what's going on. Uh, you d you've done really good with this, so you want to continue, but you have this um, ulcer that's not healing. There's some really good things that you can do, and that uh, has to do with uh, topical, doing zinc oxide. That will speed things up. Uh, but I want you to do periodic prolonged fasting, like once a week, go for 48 hours um, and fast, because the fasting will also speed up the healing. And there's one last thing you could do if you find something in your area. It's called hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And that's really good for what you're talking about. I think you'll experience huge benefits. But well done. Keep the good work. And stick to like the healthy version of ketosis. All right. That's so guys, that's a wrap. Yeah. And, um, I really appreciate all your wonderful questions, and then stay tuned next week for more questions. We're going to be uh, talking more about the summit coming up, so stay tuned for that as well. Have a wonderful week.